All right, everyone, hello and welcome back. This is BSG Online number six. Right now we have, of course, Joe and Mac 2, Lost in the Tropics, run by none other than Manix86. It's going to be an any percent run. We do have some great games coming up later today. Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Discworld, Sekiro, and others. So stay tuned for that. But right now, of course, it's Joe and Mac 2. So take it away, please, Manix. Thank you, Jack. And yeah, you might notice this game as Joan Mac 3 in Europe, and you might consider Joan Mac 2 Congo's Caper, but in this case, it's Joan Mac 2 Lost in the Tropics. And uh, let's get started because we're a little bit behind. So, uh, timer as soon as I hit start here in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. Right. Good luck and have fun. Thank you. So this game, if you haven't played it before, you might know it as Caveman Ninja uh, a long time ago on the arcade. You might know it as Joe and Mac 1 on the NES, then they made Congo's Caper as the second game, and this is the third installment on the SN SNES. So it's a very neat platformer, the colors are beautiful. This is one of my favorite looking levels, even though it's like the intro level. And there's not too much to like picking up the game naturally you know there's a jump button there's a run button you can swing your club up or down but uh, very difficult to optimize and one of the things to know is you can't run and swing your club at the same time so every time I want to kill an enemy if it's not jumping on them I'm gonna have to basically let go my run button for a small fraction of time and here we see rope jumping, well if I can show it, it's actually one of the most difficult techs in the game. You can release a cord for a single frame and then sort of jump on that moment and then drop it again. There we go, that was like our first little auto scroller. Here I'm just going to go down the rope and back up, it just triggers the next scene here. I'm going to make these little short jumps over the fish, okay I missed one. Careful here, there we go. Fortunately, there's these pieces of meats lying around throughout the stages to heal me when I make mistakes. They thought about me speedrunning this. Just gonna do a couple jumps here. So most enemies will be avoided um, if we can. It, like I said, we stop running to kill them, so we don't want that. And uh, here's our first little auto scroller besides the little cart that you saw. This is the Stegosaurus. And I don't remember all the dinosaur names, but feel free to talk in chat about uh, if you can identify every eyed dinosaur that you'll see in the game. And these are the caveman enemies, and uh, they take three hits, and they have a bit of iframes in between each hit. It doesn't really matter how you kill the enemies here. I have my own way, other runners do it a different way. Here's the first tech. I'm gonna wait in the middle until the arrow tells me to go right, otherwise it's gonna do like a real scroll, slow scroll. Here I'm gonna jump so that um, Joe walks off screen very slowly. This is one of my favorite animations when he hits the dinosaur. <laughs> oh man. That's what sucks about being an adult. No one asks you what your favorite dinosaur is anymore. <laughs> what is your favorite dinosaur, Jack? <laughs> it's the Ankylosaurus. Man, I'm trying to think which one that is. Is that the long neck it's, one? It's got like a spiked club tail. Oh yes, I know which one you mean now. <laughs> yeah. And and spiky shell. Kind of has some resemblance uh, to... Yeah, no, I know which one you mean now. I like the raptor. I mean, maybe I'm just a fan of Jurassic Park. Ah, the, Jura the fun fact about the Jurassic Park raptors is they're not technically velociraptors. What is actually a velociraptor is a lot smaller, like the size of a cat. What you see in Jurassic Park is a lot closer to um, the species, the Utahraptor. I believe you. I mean, dinosaurs... If you, if you Google raptors, like, you know, just check online, there's been so many evolutions of what a raptor is, so over the years it certainly has changed, and I think a lot of them actually had, like, 
actual wings that you could see on, on them, like wingspans. Yes, yes. There's a lot of good evidence that suggests that uh, many of the more recent dinosaurs that were wiped out in the uh, the Greek, uh, the Meteor Strike, uh, six, six million years ago, a lot of them were developed feathers. Um, as that's what a lot of the evidence shows now, is that the, as a lot of them were were feathered slightly or, or scaled, not so much the smooth skin that what you'd see in the movies. I love this animation, the cold animation, that's why I intentionally just wait there. This is Snowy Mountain. It's, it's, it's actually one of the more difficult levels early on. It doesn't really matter which order we do the levels, but in the speed run, we're trying to do the least walk around the map. Here you have to touch the door before one of these rats gives you the key. Thank you. Took me two hits, unfortunately. Being down one health here is a little scary. Let's see if we can do this. Nope, okay. Well, might as well die right there and get another shot. I too like to go into ice caves barefoot and topless. <laughs> no comments. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna do oh. these ones are a little hard to judge because you need to stop running otherwise you'll over jump we'll do a long jump here take an intentional hit and just keep going you see a little bit more of road jumpings there all right this segment here will take a little safety there's essentially a bunch of little snow rats i don't know what their actual name is sorry call them slow rats but since we have projectile weapon here we'll just get them from far oops there we go, safety meets. All right, so our boss is coming up and I'm sure you'll figure out which one it is. I'm not sure if the real dinosaur shoots anything out of their nostrils, but uh, here we are. Yeah, Jack, if you want to squeeze a quick dono, you can here at this slow. <laughs> I currently don't have any donations, unfortunately, but we would like to say, I'd just like to say that um, you can stay updated with our events by following us on Twitter and Instagram under the handle BSG Marathon. Get a behind the scenes look at the event and stay up to date with the latest news on our marathons, events, and more. We are also in the process of uploading all our VODs to your YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash BSG Marathon. Be sure to check it out and subscribe to find one new video in your day per feed. Wait, one new video per day in your feed. Thank you. This is one of my favorite events, and every time that something comes up, I try to submit to it. It's the Triceratop. Um, yes, I, I remember myself and a lot of people had plans to attend um, BSG Annual last year. Something got in the way, I forget what now. <laughs> yeah. Well, for me, it was actually a, a, an opportunity because I'm in Canada, so I was able to attend some events that are normally on site. Yeah, yeah, it has been a, it's been a double-edged sword. It's good, good points and bad points having all the events online. It has certainly allowed us to have a lot more international runners, so that's really cool, I think. This is the jungle, and I took a damage I didn't want to, so I'm going to have to take this part a little safer. Oh. Well, I didn't know that one was going to be there. So this game has a weird property where if you take your time, so to speak... Yeah, I, I knew that would happen. Okay. We'll just do it the intended way. If you basically scroll something too slow on screen, something different happens. So like an enemy that you're normally used to seeing would normally not load. But in this case, they did. So this is what I would normally want to do. Just take a damage boost and run through it. Here, jump over this. Jump over this. Take a hit, and but take the meat in return. Do a two for one. I'll take that. This is a really cool uh, little segment as well. There's going to be these like little floating platforms that we need to travel on. Here we go. Try to land on the next one here, difficult one. Okay, we actually got it, but we messed up the following screen or the following action. Here we can just run. Gotta be careful though with just one HP here. 
actually. Let's just take a bit of health to be sure. Because of that guy. That guy is, like, always in the way. Alright. So we'll take a meat here, so we should be fine. Wow. Normally he doesn't follow me. So this boss, uh, the pterodactyl, um, normally what you have to do here when it, when the wind comes after you, basically, you have to duck like this to sort of stop yourself from falling, but if you just let yourself go, it's way more fun to go wee. Just have to be careful here. There's two of these guys. Wow. Okay. Unfortunately, we took a game over, which means we need to restart the stage. I'm going to try to actually play this video game properly. And even make you start in the village. Extra exercise, I suppose. Yeah, this game is pretty difficult. I've never had a deathless run, so like I'm not entirely surprised about the result. It's also really difficult to uh, play it and talk at the same time because it's non-stop. Definitely can't read chat. Sorry to everybody. <laughs> there we go. That's how it looked like. I mean, I should have done that the first time. There we go. Jump over. Jump. Take the... For some reason, sometimes when they hit you, you can take the meat, and in this case you couldn't. Some iframe thing going on. Okay. So that's what happens when you miss it. Okay. And if anyone had some cool dinosaur facts or uh, any trivia they'd like to share, you can always throw us a donation. I'd be glad to read out any puns, jokes, facts that you have. I'm always, I'm always eager to learn. I agree. I want to learn from Jack too. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. So that was something I didn't show off the first time. So if you eat like a hot pepper or something, the the enemy will sort of, or if you eat a meat, you'll spit out some bones. It's like little funny animations. Here you clobber down the enemy in the ground. So there's some fun animations. Feels like playing a cartoon game a little bit. Oh, and just as I said that, sorry to interrupt, we do have a quick donation. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, we got $25 here from Poetics with no comment. But thank you very much for that donation, Poetics. We are almost, or no, we are over one third of the way to our BSG Online 1 goal, uh, sorry, total. Um, and it's only the first day. It's only been 12 hours. Uh, about 12 hours this marathon's been running. at 14. I'm not very good at time. Um, yeah, almost a third, a two thirds of the way to the BSG 1, and only on the first day. So thank you very much. You donated so far. This is the pterodactyl. So he has three different patterns. He can do two different types of fast swoops, or he can float up like that. The floating up allows you three hits, but he takes longer to crash down on the ground after he's dead. So ideally, you'd want him to float, but on his last one to do a swoop. All right, now on the next stage, which is the swamp. You'll notice like all the songs have this like jungle type vibe to it. And here's some riding animals. Unfortunately, we don't use any in the run. But uh, they actually walk slower than if you just run. Main reason why we don't use them. And here, the strat is just run right. That's exactly how it looked. We're going to grab the key here. Some, some screens have requirements, like open a key. They're not like huge requirements. This is one of the harder screens in my opinion. Okay. We're gonna have to take it slower here because uh yeah. This is the harder part. 
and there's these columns here that try to push you up in the spike so you can't like completely still I'd just like to say that uh, with that uh, last donation uh, Poetics has put $15 towards saving none of the team members in uh, Star Trek 64 so that is now in the lead if you'd like to see one of the team members saved um, you'll need to get some donations in because that run is coming up right after this one I'm for that donation because I don't want to hear Peppy longer than I have to ah uh, you don't like Peppy <laughs> Or Slippy. <laughs> Slippy. <laughs> Both of them. <laughs> I, I don't mind Peppy. Now, if you know this dinosaur's name, I'll pr give you props, because I forgot the name, but it's a really weird name. <laughs> Starts with an S. That's all I remember. <laughs> Sauropod. No. Um... Oh, now, now it's going to annoy me. We're going to have to Google it, because I don't even remember myself. But uh, yeah, we're trying to hit it three times here. Plesiosaurus, thank you very much, Frostgeist. The what, sorry? Plesiosaur. I I think so. Did I say it starts with an S? Oh, I, I said I didn't know the name. <laughs> yes, technically not a dinosaur, a marine reptile. This is my favorite song of the game. Doom, doom, doom. This is the volcano level. So uh, the gimmick here is obviously the lava uh, and the fire, but the lava is a one-shot kill, so we don't want to fall in the lava. I said sauropod, which was close, but that was the largest land animal. Here we go. It's pretty rare to. Uh, not make any mistakes on that screen, so I was very happy with that one. Here we have like a little... It's supposed to be like one of those chase screens, so there's kind of... You don't have a lot of iframes in this game. If you get hit once, you're probably hitting, getting hit twice. There's lava chasing you, but obviously we're fast, so it's not even a problem. These old school Nintendo games were meant to be pretty hard. Because... There wasn't a lot of gameplay to them, so they had to make it really hard, so that you died often, so you had to keep restarting. Fair point. Compare that to a modern game where it could take an hour just to get to the title screen. <laughs> you were intentionally waiting to have the columns with a certain pattern. We'll do the same thing here. There we go. And we have one more dinosaur boss coming up here. I'm sure everybody will recognize this one just from the feet. <laughs> so the, the the stomp comes down where you're standing. So as long as you run away from it, you're fine. You can even walk and it's fine, but. See if I can get this. Okay. There's an animation where he's like really bored. I choose to believe it's not a dinosaur. That's just Tim Curry in a uh, dinosaur heel. It's actually a pretty nice looking T-Rex for a video game. Uh, I find it did a good <laughs> job. <laughs> I've seen worse T-Rex. So one particular thing about this one is he has a ton of health, but his iframes are really short. So we want to try to fit hits, except when he goes over there, it's just dangerous over there. King of the Tyrants. There we go. He has a funny animation there where he dies as well. Alright, so that's it for our main stages. No, other than taking the game over, I would say that went okay. So we're missing one gem to proceed. We're like, oh my god, where could that last gem be? I'm gonna you can buy meat. You can get married in this game, you can build a house. It's pretty fun casually. Oh, apparently the village elder has one that gives it you for free. Cool. And this guy's like, I'll take you to your village. Alright, cool. I'd like to go to my village. Wait, you didn't tell me it was on fire. Why did you drop me in here? 
I guess they think I had to cut somebody out. We're gonna fight Gork first time here. He's a really annoying boss. We're gonna try to basically stay in his hitbox, but there's no guarantee that'll happen. Okay, now we have to play this I said we have to play this carefully and he does the slide. The one move that, you know, doesn't work. So the way that boss works is he's reactive. The more you press buttons and stuff, the more he does moves. And you want to sort of attacking when he's when he's uh, basically jumping like that because he's not hurting you. This is what I was looking for. But getting that that motion is not guaranteed. All right. We're already headed to the final stage, which is Rainforest. But first, we will um, buy a couple more pieces of jumbo meat to heal up. I'm sorry, that boss just looked like Leomon from Digimon. I have no idea about my Digimons. Fair enough. <laughs> Spoiler alert, Leomon dies. A lot. Here's our fancy rainbow for the rainforest. Made it out of all the gems. I want to be quiet here because this is the hardest part of the game in my opinion. And then I'll explain it after. Okay, first part kind of self-explanatory but basically I have to let go my jump in midair to be able to hit these pterodactyls. This one I have to slow down though. All right we're fine. Damage list is fine. Okay so yeah that was pretty much it and if you if you mess up the pattern everything is sort of off script and it just gets annoying. This is the bone sanctuary. Or refights is probably a more appropriate term that everybody would know. We're just sort of refight these bosses. Most of them are the same. There's a few differences on a couple of them. Like uh, di for some reason, uh, the, ter the Triceratop has different lengths of iframes. This fight is exactly the same, except terrain being different, of course. Normally, you want to hit the kill the boss as he is. Lower, as you can see, it takes forever to die. <laughs> and also, when they're dead, I want to be in the middle of the screen because if I'm to the side, it's going to take a really long, like, side scroll before I could move. Here's a pterodactyl. I find this one is a little easier because you have more room to, especially for the sweeps here. There we go. Another sweep. Come on. Nope. Not being nice. Just. Flodidactyl. There we go. And we're finding the Triceratop again, except this time the Triceratop is uh, not in the snowy mountain. And he has longer iframes, which really changes the fight. Because I can't just do the side the casual walk that I was doing before. So I have to like really know when to hit him and jump over his head because yeah, it's time to basically start an attack. Like this. Okay, he got me once. Oh, he got me twice. That's not fun. Okay. So we come to the... What's it called again? The Plesiosaurus? Complexity... Plesiosaur, yes. Now this one has is a guaranteed three cycle in this one, be, and it's because of that first cycle. He dips down in the water immediately, so you don't have time to get an extra hit in. But the rest of the fight is the same, and like these, like what kind of attacks are these? Like who who gets hit by these? <laughs> One more. There we 
go. And our good friend the T-Rex again. Three health with the T-Rex is I wouldn't say like dangerous, but there's a risk, like he's got a weird uh nose hitbox when you're trying to hit him and you can act some, think you're gonna hit him and not and take damage instead. His eye frames are a tiny bit longer, not much. So far so good. Okay. Alright, so we took a hit there. So there's also worth noting that uh, you know we don't get health refills here, so it's not necessarily easy to get through all of that. So we have two health here for the final boss, or we have one health for the final boss. He has two forms. This one we're going to take safe like the first time. We're just going to attack him when he's doing the jump. I'm trying to bait him to jump. Some say it's random. I think you can manipulate it in some way, but it's it's limited the amount of time you can. Like when I swim my club, he becomes more aggressive. Does it trigger more jumps or not? I'm not sure. There we go. So that was the first phase. Second phase is coming up soon, which is going to be Super Gork. And which is actually easier than that phase. So time will be when I pick up the crown after he's dead in, in about a minute. So we, every time we hit him, he's going to do like these little animations. Some are longer, some are shorter. This is the longest one. Of course, it's a marathon, so it'll give me the longest ones. Three times in a row? That's pretty great. We're going to jump over for this. Okay, that one I have to be careful. Sometimes he can come down really fast. He's coming down really slow. Wow, I've never seen so many jump spins. Okay. Five! That's crazy. Okay, this one comes down where you are. This one's the fastest. He just sort of moves forward. Alright, time's coming up here in a few seconds. And time. There we go. GG, well done. Yeah, I mean, after the game over, it went okay. <laughs> I expect hey, underestimate is always is always underestimate. So, yeah, the the I knew the the estimate is based on the possibility that hey that could have happened. So <laughs> it did. Yeah, well, it looks like uh, twenty six forty eight for you. I'm happy. So yeah, well done. So this is a fun part of the game. You're supposed to go home after, but because I didn't build my house and I go to the house, it says no one's home. You're supposed to have a fully decorated house and a wife and everything, and but Joe and Mac are basically wifeless in the house no decorations nothing yeah i just want to thank wh whoever is coming out to watch the run i appreciate it being part of the donkey kong block <laughs> um yep right in the middle of a cool uh, uh nintendo block right here yeah as you can see this game does play co-op so if you have a co-op friend it's a really fun co-op game as well you the other player will play as mac and uh, the game is exactly the same. You just have another player to help you out. Uh, yeah, you can follow me on, on Twitter and Twitch, Manic City 6 And uh, thanks to my own community as well. It's been supportive of every game that I speedrun and every event that I'm in. Be sure to check out the VOD so I can check out all the comments that I've missed out on. What do we have next, Jack? Oh, well, thank you very much, Max. Yeah, it was a great run. Uh, coming up next, we're going to have Star Fox 64. It's going to be a score attack run. So I'm hoping to see something in the range of about 2,200 if there, maybe. Um, and there is a bid wall for that, for which team member you want to save. So get your donations in quick for that. We're going to take a very short break, set up for the next run, and we will see you in the future. I know.